how do I generate new ideas from my notes with Zettocaston, with my note taking system? I get this a question very often, and I think we're getting tripped up on this misconception that generating new ideas is an event rather than a process, right? We think, oh, the muse just decided to grace its presence upon me. I come up with this original, beautiful idea that no one's had. Or we think, okay, we're, I'm in the shower and all of a sudden, bam, there's an epiphany, right? I, I can't recreate that again other than, you know, to take a lot more showers. And so I want to talk about, instead of seeing generating new ideas as an event, rather it's a process. Right? It's uh, stages that we can go through to get to that new idea. So I'll share with you my workflow, my process, and uh, yeah, let's get to it. This first step to generating a new idea is not writing down ideas. It's not taking notes. It's to train ourselves to ask questions first. Because what is an idea? It's an answer to a question, a solution to a problem, right? It's an insight about something. Now, what is that something, right? It, we all know the themes, general themes we're interested in. It could be productivity, it could be you know, learning, it could be creativity, it could be, I don't know, travel, whatever it is that you're interested in. And the thing is, probably as I was listing through those, you're like, yeah, yeah, me too, I'm interested in that. But that's not really helpful, right? Because we're all interested in the same things. Like what is going to be the difference between my new idea and your new idea or all of the great thinkers' ideas about these topics in the past? We have to get specific on what is my lens on this theme, on this topic, and what is your lens on this theme and on this topic, right? And we get there by asking questions like, what is it that I am curious about around the theme of productivity, for example? And there are two places we want to ask it. There is at the global level, we have questions, and at the local levels, we have questions. At the global level, I've talked about this before, is the Feynman's 12 favorite questions. These are questions that guide us through life, so check that out if you haven't. And then at the local level, every time we write down a note, we want to think about, okay, this idea, what question can it answer, right? And you start to make connections between the ideas and the, th the questions it can answer. Let me just show you a quick example. So I was reading this book called The Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, and there was an idea in there between the power of the beginner's mind and the power of the expert's mind and how to understand the two. And the idea was that the innocence of the first inquiry is really core to the Zen mind, to the beginner's mind. And this ability to see without assumptions um, is, you know, this emptiness, this free of habits of the expert mind, being ready to accept, being ready to doubt, to open, to be open to all possibilities, that is the power of the beginner's mind. Okay, interesting idea, right? We are all trying to be experts, but uh, Zen Buddhism is telling us to come back to, you know, a fresh set of eyes. Very interesting. So I was thinking about, you know, what, what kind of questions can this answer? Well, first, we have to reevaluate the need to be an expert, right? The, especially to me, I always wondered, you know, fake it till you make it. Something about it that I don't really like, but I don't know. Is, is it helpful to do that? Is it not helpful to do that? I want to be able to answer that question and I think this will help. Another question, you know, we think we can judge the accuracy of knowledge of something, whether it's truth or not. So how should we accept, doubt, stay open to possibilities and still be able to discern what is true? I don't know, you know, but I feel like this is a helpful idea to build on. So this is how we can do this uh, at the local level. So the first step before we even, you know, jot down ideas is to train ourselves to always ask questions, to discern what is it specifically I am interested in? What is my angle? The second step of generating new ideas is to gather old ideas, but in atomic form. To generate new ideas when we are learning from all sorts of sources and taking notes on them, we have to do two things. We have to, one, understand the idea, and two, identify the context, right? The idea happened because it was existing in some sort of context, and we want to understand within that context. However, if you want to then generate something new, what happens is we have to take that same core idea and apply it to a different context, and find the context where it works because not all new contexts will work with this original idea. And so if our goal is to generate new ideas, then we have to be able to know the core idea and its context. That's why we want to write atomic notes, not just notes in you know super long form, because then we are not separating the context from the idea itself. 
So let me show you an example. Uh, let's say this, this is Picasso's innovative process. He took the portrait and he started with the traditional, the very realistic versions of how to run, draw, draw portraits. He had a blue period, he had a rose period, he had an African period where he was inspired by African art, and then he went into cubism, he went into surrealism, and all to say that you know, the core idea is the same, but when we apply it to different places, new things come up. And to generate new ideas, of course, then we want to be build, building on the shoulder of giants that came before us. But in order for us to do something new, we have to understand it in its core essence so we can apply it to different contexts. Now that we have all these old ideas in atomic form, the third step is to leverage time and space. So a lot of us face this problem of, okay, I've collected a bunch of things, but you know, no new ideas have emerged. What is happening? Why do I have new ideas? Well, the idea is that it will emerge over time. So let's talk about time. Okay? Why do we mistakenly think that creating a new idea is an event, right? We have these examples of an epiphany just hits me out of nowhere, right? Isn't that just, you know, a one-off thing? But actually, if we look at neuroscience and how we learn and process information is there are two states. The first one is the deliberate focus state where, you know, we are learning, we are thinking, right? we're looking at this and we're grappling with it. And that's what we think the thinking happens. And that's what we do in our you know, PKM systems, our personal knowledge management systems. But that is only half of information processing and learning. The other half happens during a very relaxed, loose state, you know, where we are just falling asleep, where we're in the shower, where our mind is relaxed, but it's actually processing information. And it's only when these two states combine that we actually learn, that we actually generate insight. And so this element of time, you know, giving yourself enough time to move between two states is really important. Then there is space, right? There's in our first brain, right? We have all of these thoughts, but it's really difficult to come back to them. We need to be reminded of them within, you know, Zettelkasten, whether it's with real paper or it's in your digital thinking garden, there is a space to come back to it after the time has passed, right? We can learn a new idea, leave it there, allow our relaxed mind to think about it by itself, and then come back to a space where it's still captured, right? We left notes for our future self, so we know where to pick up. And in that way, we are able to generate ideas because we can work on these half-baked ideas over time. And a really good tool for that, of course, is the map of content. I've talked about it again in this video before, but let me just show you. You know, one of the questions I started with was, how can I hold two opposing ideas at the same time and function? And I collected a bunch of old ideas in atomic form. I have some quotes you know, from Fitzgerald that spurred this idea out in the first place. I have another quote from Feynman. And then I have a few other notes on different elements that I think are relevant to this question. Okay. It took me some time to even get here. But because I had the space, I had the time, I could build this out over time. Okay. And then uh, I can also use the space in different ways. Right? Writing, we start out linear. Right? There is some sort of logic already baked into the writing that we do. But of course, with Canvas um, that I have a video on, if you want to use it, we can visually move concepts around, right? try and figure out what is the connection, what is the relationship between these concepts. And so I can also visually think about it using the divergent mind, using the convergent mind. So there is so much time and space I can use to ponder one idea, right? Eventually I came up with an idea I wrote about in my newsletter, I'll link it here and you can see. This is what supercharges our thinking, right? We can have a direction of where we want to go. We have ideas that are condensed down to atomic forms. We, we know their context, but we remove them to go into new context and we build the idea back up. And then we use time and space to be able to explore exactly what it is the connections that we see. And eventually that helps us generate that new idea. I have so much more to say about this, but first check out this video here to get started on your process and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.